You're watching Gears, brought to you by Ram Truck. You know, one of the biggest misconceptions that people have about building a vehicle is the amount of time it's going to take to do it. I mean, most people work on a vehicle for years. Then they watch some show that says they did it in a week or a month, and then they're like, what's up? Why is it taking me so long? Well, hopefully you know that there is no reality in reality shows. The true reality is that it takes time, it takes money, and it takes planning to build a vehicle correctly. And the nicer the nice, the higher the price in all three areas. But if you keep at it, don't lose sight of your goal and keep a realistic budget, there will come a day that you finish that project and you can set the tools down. And then you can look at that amazing vehicle you just built, look back on the incredible journey you just took, and go, man, what a ride. And until you experience this, you have no idea what you're missing. And this is the story of one of those journeys. Now the goal of the Rat Roaster project was to build a classic hot rod in the form of a 32 Ford Roadster, since it embodies the very essence of hot rodding and is without a doubt one of the most popular cars in history. Not content to use a fiberglass body, we went to Brookville Roadsters, where they start with flat pieces of steel and then begin to form them into the timeless shape of a 32 Ford Roadster. Giant presses form the steel into body panels. And then a group of craftsmen slowly assemble the bodies with a fit and finish that Henry Ford could have only dreamed of back in 1932. However, a lot of old school techniques are still in use, like leaded seams, and swinging a big hammer to get things moving in the right direction. The frames are also assembled in-house at Brookville, and they come fully boxed with cross members and pedals in place. So they're ready for any suspension that you want to hang on it. The body, once assembled, is mounted on the frame, and now it's ready for you to build into a real running car. Now, the first step to any project is to lay out the direction of the buildup. And this is where things get fun, because this is where the car starts to become yours. Now the idea here was to build something that had the look and the feel of what would have been the nastiest looking, fastest running thing that could have been on the street in 68 or 69. Very similar to John Milner's coupe in the movie American Graffiti. Except in the late 60s, muscle cars were king. So a Deuce Roadster would have to be seriously wicked to overshadow a Mustang or a Camaro or a Cuda. This is how we laid it out. We're going to build a late 60s hot rod, roughly 1968. This car has got to run at least in the mid-12s because we're building the fastest car in the valley, and we want to spank those muscle cars. <laughs> now, it also needs to handle, stop well, and be reliable enough for daily use. It needs to be reasonably affordable, and we're going to do that by doing the best bang for the buck, just like somebody would have done back here. No stupid money here. And number five, it's got to be really cool. And if we pull these off, number five is gonna take care of itself. The chassis started to come together with a classic style hairpin front suspension and I-beam axle. Front disc brakes were also added since those were starting to appear on hot rods in the late 60s we wanted the extra stopping power of discs. The rear suspension stayed traditional with a nine inch Ford rear end. We 
then added a more modern triangulated four-link suspension, not only for the superior handling and strength, but look at this, look at this. You still get great axle articulation when you hit a bump, but no side-to-side -side movement. But also for the fact that once the body's on, you're not gonna be able to see it. So the car will still have the look of the late 60s. Wheels and tires are always key to any project. <laughs> there you go. Oh, that's great. <laughs> that front end is smoking. And with ET wheels and vintage cheater slicks in back and little skinnies in front, we got exactly the look that we're after. Hey, welcome back to Gears and the long-awaited payoff of the Rat Roaster. Now, when we left off, the chassis and suspension was all laid out, the body was in place, and the whole project was coming together fairly quickly. But now comes the details. And details are what makes your vehicle different than everybody else's. Now, I know these take time to create and build, but they're worth it because you don't want to be driving the same thing somebody else is. That's just wrong. To fit the direction of the Rat Roaster, a 580 horse blown small block Chevy was built by Keith Craft Racing and then decked out with vintage accessories to give the proper look. And since shifting gears has always been part of hot rodding, a Tremec five-speed transmission will give us enough gear options to cruise or race depending on our mood. But on a project like this, Laying out the drivetrain is only part of it. The other part is constructing floors on a firewall to fit around everything and still give you a place to rest your feet. So fabricating all this was next. This is also the time to do any other fabrication or modifications to the body or the frame. And we had plenty of those to do. Of course, a late 60s style hot rod has got to have some cool bucket seats. And Speedway Motors carries a really slick aluminum bomber seat. But as cool as those are, they got even better when we added the special diamond tuck upholstery from Trent's Trick Upholstery. Now, since a car with a late 60s hot rod vibe would also have to have a tie in with the late 60s rock and roll scene, a vintage microphone was cloned to become the shifter. And it also conceals switches to operate the exhaust cutouts. So when you turn on the mic, the car gets louder. Fender guitar pit guard material was used on the dash panel. Legendary bass guitar player Billy Cox donated some vintage Jimi Hendrix guitar picks. And we put together a custom 335 with Gibson guitars. 
that not only matched the car, but captured the sound of the era. The next thing to build was one of the most important parts to give us the look that we were after, fenders. Now, little motorcycle fenders fit on the front end of a rod is a very common look. And as you can see, the car looks great with or without them. But the rear fenders, those needed to be real, they needed to be steel, and they needed to be bobbed. Now, some of you guys might be saying, why? Why use fenders at all? Here's why. But by the late 60s, it was illegal not to have fenders on your car, and the cops were watching. So what guys did is take the fenders and cut them down or bob them. All right, with the stock fender mocked into place, now it's time to decide how you are going to cut that fender. Now, the idea back in the late 60s was to cut away as much of the fender as possible and to still stay out of jail. Now, the law said that all of the tread had to be covered, but most cops back in the day would let you off with a warning if you had as much as a third of the tread showing. So that's the look we're going to go after. Starting to get a little more radius down in here. Notice how the fender blends right into the base of the body. And then up here, it radiuses more, curves down more toward the tire. Then we finished it off by rolling a bead in it. We're back and walking you through the buildup of the Rat Roaster. Now, at this point, we had pretty much everything mocked in place, but this is where some newcomers to the project started to get a little confused. Because with a name like the Rat Roaster and the body in bare steel for so long, people thought we were going to build a rat rod. Well, nothing could be further from the truth because now it was time for paint and upholstery. <laughs> So we shipped the car off to the Hot Rod Institute in Rapid City, South Dakota, where they smoothed out the flanks, shot on the special PPG Rat Roaster green paint, and stitched up the interior to match the seats. Now one of the bonuses of a 30s era car is the fact that you can run it with different looks depending on your mood. A full hood cleans up the lines, protects against the elements, and says, I'm slick and cool and here to cruise. If you pull the sides off and just leave the top of the hood on, you still get the class of the 56 Buick portholes on the top, but there's also the tease of that engine lurking underneath, tempting people to take a closer look. And with no hood at all, you got the all out, in your face, hot rod look that's loud, smells like burning fossil fuels, and ain't afraid of nobody. Three looks, one car, and a whole lot of fun. At this point, the project was rolling down the home stretch of final assembly. And this is where we took care of things like steering linkage, alternator clearance, plumbing the brake and fuel lines, and installing a prototype wiring harness from electronic prototypes. Now, since these final details are time consuming and tedious, this is where a lot of people get discouraged and give up or get in a hurry and mess up. <laughs> oh, dang it. The key here is to take your time, keep your eye on the finish line because it's getting close. 
Then finally, the day will come where you take your list and you set it down because everything's marked off of it. Then pour in your fuel, your oil, your antifreeze, hook up your battery, and turn the key. And when your finished project rolls out of the shop the first time, you'll understand the rush that a climber gets when he stands on top of Mount Everest. Except you don't have to freeze your butt off to get there, and you get to enjoy your accomplishment every day. <laughs> You know, one of the biggest challenges of building a vehicle from the ground up is keeping it on track and true to your original vision, especially if the project takes a few years to complete. Now, we've spent a lot of time walking you through the buildup of the Rat Roaster, and there's no question the car looks good. But the real question is, did we build the car we set out to build? Did we hit our goals? Well, let's see. Does this car look like something from the late 60s? Well, with the candy green paint, the diamond tuft interior, the blown small block engine, and the side pipes and the cutouts, this car would have definitely grabbed everybody's attention at the local burger joint in the late 60s. Number two, would it spank a vintage muscle car back in the day? Well, with over 580 horsepower on tap, a pause rear end, five forward gears, and almost no weight, we're going to have trouble keeping this car out of the 10s, let alone running the 12s. Hey, I'm looking for a really bad 55 Chevy. <laughs> Number three, is it reliable and usable? Well, the handling and braking are far better than they were back in 1932, even though the front suspension is very similar to what rolled off the assembly line. Making modern upgrades like rack and pinion steering and disc brakes make a world of difference in handling without sacrificing the vintage look that we were after. When you add to that a full top, a hood, and a very street-friendly drivetrain, you really could drive this car anywhere, anytime. Number four, did we get the best bang for our buck? Definitely. By keeping away from billet accessories, air conditioning, cup holders, and all other unnecessary goo there's no waste of time or money on this project. Everything on the car is there for a reason and fits the direction of a late 60s hot rod. And number five, is it cool? Well, you've got the car, and the matching Gibson guitar, and the appearance in the book, The Last Rock and Roll Show. That's a pretty cool deal. But you also have the fact that Ravel is coming out with a Rat Roaster model, so you can build your own. And it doesn't just come with the car, they've also included a scale copy of the guitar, too. Now, that's really cool. And now, what are you working on? Today's What Are You Working On features a number of people because we've got a whole world of model builders out there that are waiting to see the results of the second annual model building contest that we did with Ravel. And I just happen to have the results right here. So check out the cars these guys built. First up, in the under 15 box stock category, 
The winner is Andy Kahn with his original looking 69 Camaro Z28. Next, in the 15 and under unlimited class, we have Cameron Myers with a wild purple 68 Hemi Dart. In the 16 and over box stock novice class, you've got Simon Sinclair with a very clean orange 68 Charger. And in the 16 and over box stock skilled class, Russell Frieda Sr. brought home the gold with his copper colored 70 Chevelle. In the 16 and over unlimited novice class, you've got Luis Lynch Maldonado with a super low two-tone 68 Charger. And in the 16 and over unlimited skilled class, Corey Jackson pulled out all the stops with his tilt front end, highly modified 68 Hemi Dart. Now, not only do all these guys' names get added to our trophy here, but they also get all kinds of cool prizes from us and Ravel and Testers, Badger Airbrush, Scale Auto Magazine. It's a cool deal. So congratulations to all the winners. There was some incredible competition in all the categories. Now, people are asking us, are we going to do it again? Yep, because we want to keep reminding people that win or lose, it doesn't matter how small you start. If you keep building stuff, your skill level, your confidence, your projects will get bigger and bigger and bigger until one day you've got the real thing sitting in your garage that you built with your own two hands. And that, my friends, is not just the American dream. That's American graffiti.